Okay, all set. Okay. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, roll call, please. Chairman Gray. Here. Member Carey. Here. Vice Chair Marsh. Here. Alternate Member Hennigan. Here. And Alternate Member Lemming. Here. And let the record show that Members Hutchins and Kaczynski are absent with notice. Good. Thank you, Tracy. Let's all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. They have to say prayers. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Let's um, Rick. Are you? You want to? We'll, we'll do the minutes first. Uh, I can make my suggestion. Okay, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, can we move on the agenda item three to the last item to get items four and five uh, heard earlier? Yes. Okay. Good. Is, is everybody in agreement with uh, changing the agenda accordingly? And so, therefore, is there a motion to, to make that change? Yes, yes I make that yes. motion. And a second? Second. Agree. Okay. Everybody in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Okay, so we'll just move um, two down to three. 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 Yeah, good. Good, well, thank you. Um, minutes, uh, first order of business, though, we'll keep in that order, number one. Um, <clears throat> any comments regarding the uh, the minutes from our... December meeting. I have one. Uh, on page four, the uh, next to the last paragraph that begins with the member, member Kaczynski, uh, third line down, it says driveway would be impacted, and I believe it's compacted. Wayne, do you yeah, agree that that's. Agree. Okay. That's my only comment. Good, good catch. Uh, um, just goes to show you, somebody does read the minutes. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> good. Any other comments regarding the minutes? Not, uh, can I have a motion, please, to approve? I'll motion. Good. Thank you. Uh, second. second. All in favor of approving the minutes from the uh, December meeting? Aye. Aye. Um, Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, so in order to proceed with our previous amendment to the agenda. Um, we have the um, item number three, which is the comp plan amendment uh, number item. Two. Yeah. Number two. Number two is, is going to be taken down to the bottom, concept plan review, right? No, no, no it's no. number two, the concept plan for 42 Harbor Drive will be your next item. Three goes down. Yes. You want to do that? Yes. Oh, okay, good. Because we have people here for that. Understood. Right. Thank you. Okay, great. I'm with you. Um, <clears throat> yes, so therefore, uh, with regard to that, um, the uh, uh, this is a quasi-judicial hearing, and therefore, uh, let our town attorney please. Uh, any ex parte communication on this matter? No. None. None. Seeing none, okay. Good. Uh, Staff uh, swearing in, yes. swear in our witnesses. Anybody who likes would like to speak on this item, please stand and raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are providing to the commission is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Uh, staff report, please. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Um, before you have uh, requests from 42 Harbor Drive South. Um, they were previously before the board in December and have uh, taken the comments into consideration and have resubmitted with those comments um, uh, included in their site plan and proposed drawings. Um, at the present time, we're talking um, <clears throat> uh, on page uh, A1.2 would reflect a two-story structure as proposed uh, with a two-car garage, the uh, septic tank and drain field itemized in the front. Um, we have no legal issues with the property. The 
only item that we um, and they've agreed to correct uh, this was just a question of um, the deck going too far east and being anchored to the property line has to maintain a five foot setback but it's something that can't be taken care of in the regular permitting process um, apart from that the setbacks the uh, open space calculations uh, floor, issue, floor area ratios were all looked at and uh, finally being compliant. So um, at this time, if the uh, board has any questions, the applicant is also here, by the way, if you have any questions or um, I could turn the floor over to them to explain the project. Sure, please. Yeah, uh, my name is David, you... David Frank, representing yeah. Andersons. Um, just one correction of the patio that's not a concrete patio there on the east side that's a, a white gravel um, now I think white gravel would be permissible to go to the property line is that correct I'm, I'm referring to the wood deck being anchored to the property oh, I right see. behind I mean, that yeah that's going to be eliminated yeah okay yeah okay um, now I see on my plan the wood deck is cut back to back of the house the left side of the house but I believe again that's going to be eliminated anyway yeah so uh, it, it's it, as yeah. I said, that's why I'm just making a sure. note, notation of it that it will be at the on the approved set all right when that when that comes in this is so so apart from that the the, the footprint the setbacks um, the distance from the waterways um, I have no issue on that and I I have a question. The, the, uh, the decking, so it, it, it's kind of interesting. The plan shows the deck as part of the plan, but the pool not as part of the plan. So are you planning to do, put the pool in at a later time or uh, are doing that at the same time as the construction? Uh, I think that's going to be put in a later time. Is that correct? Your, uh, it, could you give up uh, just for the record your address, please? Yes, yeah, so you can step up to yeah. the mic. Thank you. So I'm the owner, and I wasn't here last month. I'm sorry. Um, can, can you, oh, yes. Tracy, can you swear her in, please? She, I did already. She did not. No, I, no. Oh, did. I did in the same time in the back, but I can oh, do it again. I thought you did. I thought I, I saw know, you. I know, I did, but it's fine. We can do it again. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're providing to the commission is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank so you. let me understand again. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so like I mentioned, we are going to add a pool. It's going to be a different permit. It's going to be in different, you know, times. And everything that you see, decks, we had some issues with the prior architects. So that's why I'm here. Uh, they didn't understand anything. They didn't, it was, it was a mess. So they didn't comply with anything. They didn't read what you guys actually provide us with. So it wasn't our fault. But everything you see, deck, it's going to be grass. It's going to be whatever the town needs the way we can actually move in, in the house with the kids as soon as possible so uh it's in your hands but we just agree with whatever you guys propose well, it is the intention to install the deck at the time of the pool or put the deck in at the time the house is built it's going to be with the pool yeah. it's it's going to be with the pool it's not we're not in yeah, future. yeah it's future. a future thing like also the few where it says future spa which we didn't know because i'm not an architect that's not even a spa, it's not a building construction. It's gonna be one of those portable spas that I am gonna add later on when we're gonna actually be able to. So this is not gonna be a construction here, it's just the architect didn't <coughs> didn't put on the plan what we actually said. So that's why it's where the misunderstanding not, is. Not it's not him, he's <laughs> wonderful, he's, he's representing us now and it's gonna be a different thing. But this future spot right here, it's not a build construction. It's not going to be a whole. <laughs> it's no, it's going to be grass all over. We're actually going to put fake grass because my daughter has high health issues. And everything, it's going to be just grass and trees and the way it is, honestly. So we don't want to try to change anything. <laughs> then I have a question for yes. staff. Uh, Wayne, will the uh, deck not be part of this permit then? Um, what I did, we took into consideration, it's not part of the permit per se, but I did take those numbers into consideration to make sure, should they have it, because it was indicated as future, the intent was there, we take that into consideration. So those numbers were calculated, and they still met, met, met the uh, previous area. That's, okay, that yeah. was one of my questions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I class, I, when we did the calculations, um, we, we, we treated it as if it was going to be there, 
Um, as long as you show the intent that you intend on doing it, then I've taken the consideration. Um, so if they comply with that and they meet that setback rule by eliminating the deck to the west, to the east side, they'll be fine. So that's the extent of it. But they don't have to do it. But if they did it, we would be okay as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, just a couple of questions. This house, um, remind us, if you could, the reason for keeping that garage was for a three-inch nonconformity on the west side? On the east, yeah, on the west side, there was a two point, well, it's a 0.24, which is about three inches, yeah. Um, because you're doing, is this on piles, the existing house? Or yes, it is. I mean, has anybody, you're raising the ground floor by almost. Twelve inches. No, well, it's one foot three, I think. Yeah, it's around, yeah, a little over 12, I think. And you're doing all that for three inches. Um, well, it's, I, it's the. FEMA regulations require the, the No, I understand that, but uh, I mean, you're leaving such a minimal part of the house. The other problem I see is I don't know when you're going to get into structural drawings, but if you look at your first floor or second floor, I don't know how you're going to support that. Well, that'll be with girder trusses. It's a wood frame second floor, so we can support that with girder trusses. But it steps back over the existing garage right. quite dramatically. It has yeah, it three steps. We use girder trusses all the time to do that. That's not all right, I, I'm just, uh, it, it seems like a, you're for three inches. Well, one thing on the, uh, the garage, it is on pilings, and, and that I don't believe has to be raised up. Um, we can keep that at the lower elevation. Correct. Um, so the garage doesn't have to be raised up, but the rest of the house does. Um, okay. All right. It seems well, you know what you're doing. It. It's hard to move <laughs> grade beam. Uh, yeah. Grade beam. Uh, um, uh, this had a driveway that was a, a semicircle at one time, correct? That's, yep. that's, that, that's correct. It's so we changed. now have corrected that. So it's no been drain changed field. To, a, to appropriate enough adequate space for the drain field. The new drain field is going in. And uh, the discussions on the garage, they're going to require a minimum of uh, one inch per foot, one inch, one square inch per square foot of venting, mechanical venting, smart venting to allow for the lower elevation. Okay. That's going to be in place when the building plants uh, go in, and I already discussed that. Okay. Or they would have to raise that. It'd be interesting to see. Yeah. The other comment I have is this private patio with the white gravel. I just don't think it's fair for you to put it all the way to the property line. I think it's kind of almost an encroachment on the neighbor. That, that's in, in effect uh, almost a hard surface. Can I speak? Sure. We can take it out. It's not yeah. even a private patio, so that's another thing. Uh, we're just going to have uh, one of those outdoor um, showers for the pool, like in the corner somewhere at one point, if we will. But this, it can be just grass or a gravel, and then it doesn't yes. have to go all the way there. So yeah. it's just visual, looks bad, but it's, I mean, I have no problem in taking that off. I, I, I don't think, well, that's your choice. I just yes. think you should continue the hedge that you have shown in the landscape. It's kind of interrupted okay. by that patio, and it's kind of a, okay. I don't know if we have that drawing. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the hedge stops and starts, mm -hmm. and I think it's, if you do want to use that space for whatever activity, it should be <coughs> buffered. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. By the neighbor. Okay. Um, the architecture is an improvement. Um, I think we're we're getting closer to. Yes. So, there are only a few minor things. If you look at uh, the rear elevation, and you see your transom lights. Can you pull that up? Please, sorry. Uh, A5. A5. Yeah. All right. The that window to the right or bottom right. You can see your transom. Your transom mullions are on a line. All up over okay. the place, and it occurs consistently. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, 
I know I may be picking, but no, no, that, that's those no, things drive fine. me crazy. It, it <laughs> yeah, wasn't no. him, so now he, of course, yeah, sees that. Like that. Yeah, I mean, it's just not a yeah. happy situation. Yeah. Um, the materials, the only thing is the red door, correct? Uh, uh, if possible, but not necessary. I'm very easy. <laughs> so. When you say red, um, I didn't see the, the, the chip, sure. but I mean, if you're more of kind of a deeper red than a, than a fire engine red, that would be nice. Okay, perfect. Whatever you guys approve on red, I just because Feng Shui is good energy, but it doesn't really matter, honestly. No, I, I, I think it's fine to have a little here, bit. That's why we love the, the town so much. It's so pretty and so colorful and so old Florida and beautiful. So that's the only reason, but you know, I, I can go with brown or white. <laughs> I mean, have some fun, but don't just let no. it scream out. No, it's not. It's not going to be. No, for sure not. Would you like a uh, paint chip submitted on that? or for future? Yeah, I think we do need to see that. We will red definitely red. bring something. Good. Thank you. Yeah. When it comes Maybe get to a couple different yeah, yeah. reds. Too. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm not. Good idea. Any other board? Are you done, Mark? Yeah, I'm done. Good. Any other board members have any questions mm -hmm. of the applicant? Good. Uh, well, thank you very much thank for uh, making a very meaningful improvement to the town. And, I wish I was here. And number That's two, thank you for your thank cooperation. You. We thank all you. appreciate that. Uh, any any members of the public here uh, have any comments or questions? With that then, any other discussion on the part of the board members? Okay, we'll then close our Quasi judicial hearing and uh, move on to a motion to forward our recommendation to the zoning official for further consideration. Do we have a? I'll okay. make that motion. Good. With the, uh, with the, with the comments. With the comments by Mark Marshall. Yeah. Mark Marshall. I'm sorry, Mark Marshall. <laughs> I'm anybody right now. <laughs> You're anybody. Good. Okay. Good. Thank you, uh, Rick. Any other? Uh, uh, a second. Uh, Second. Good. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good. Good. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Appreciate it. Okay. Now moving right along, let's um, let's go to uh, what is item number three? Which four. Be? Four. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Earlier than that. Very cool. Good. Um, uh, Tracy. Um, would you uh, give us a, uh, an overview of four, please? I'll do that for you, Mr. Chair. Oh, good. Thank um, you. Pardon my voice, but I'm on cold medication today, if you don't recognize me speaking. Um, these uh, two items, uh, four and five, are intended. They were brought forward uh, to you to um, elicit discussion on this committee about um, where what you would like to see and where you would like to go with the uh, parameters of uh, moving stuff forward in the future um, this board has asked for um, uh, additional authority and additional teeth and additional parameters uh, in order to look at stuff that comes before you and we recommend that today you spend a few minutes taking uh, a discussion to talk about objective standards that we might apply and we have the, our planner here too who can uh, interact with us um, and staff of course uh, to see what we might propose back to the commission as a recommendation to give you the kind of uh, suitable teeth that you need to um, vet projects as they come forward here so that's kind of the overview here um, ask you to kick off some discussion and, and maybe uh, weigh in on what Good. what you see as a reasonable set of uh, rules and regulations to, to uh, recommend and we'll go from there. May I <coughs> suggest we start by asking uh, our... Can I just, sorry. Yes, please. Sure. Mark. Um, Jamie, can you give us a short, because I wasn't present, unfortunately, I know Rick was the only one. Um, this was discussed at the commission meeting do you want to and um, I, I think I'd like to just get a flavor of what. If I can, I'm going to uh, deflect to Rick since he was there and actually spoke on behalf of the, uh, the committee to the commission. Um, I'm not sure the commission yet uh, knows 
how much uh, power it wants to cede to this board, uh, or you know where the where the guardrails are going to be on this. But um, Rick uh, very eloquently um, uh, addressed the commission uh, at the meeting. Was it last week? Or last two weeks. Last week. Last week. And uh, what kind of flavor or feeling did you come away from uh, uh, that conversation? I I think we've got several of us that were present and uh, so I would encourage Brian and Wayne to chime in here. Um, uh, it appeared to me that there's reservations about uh, ceding any subjective authority uh, and that uh, it, so it, the one that spoke most to this was Steve Cause. Uh, he had strong opinion that uh, that he didn't want there to be uh, subjective uh, authority and that if it was limited and specific, I believe are the words he used, uh, that uh, he would uh, be in favor of considering that. Um, now, if I can continue to say that that's difficult, <laughs> um, that uh, if we want specific we can pass some more ordinances and, and include it in the code and then have more things for Wayne to review uh, to code. Um, one of the things that this board has been doing over the last six or eight months is being giving uh, subjective criticism of certain things. Um, you know how the wood deck is going to be in this last discussion, uh, how close the gravel is to the, uh, to the edge of the property line, um, uh, whether, whether the transom lights are aligned, whether the front door uh, color is. This is a lot of what we have to lend is a judgmental, uh, subjective uh, addition to the code. Um, so I think it's a challenge to really come back with a set of uh, narrowly defined things that, uh, that the commission gets comfortable in ceding to us. So that's kind of my, my opinion and, and a quick synopsis of what was said the other night. Um, but I would encourage the three staff people that were here to add anything that, that, uh, that they heard. Good, thank you. Uh, I think to your, your comment about perhaps it will require <laughs> building some new pieces into the code to give you specific things to uh, measure against. I think the concern is, and I heard it this morning, you know, like talking about colors of doors and things like that. The concern here is that under the current model, you can make great recommendations and they can, uh, I don't want to say fall on deaf ears, but they, if if they go to the building official piece of this process um, and the applicant meets code under building code and town code, sometimes those recommendations can be ignored. And that's not, I think, what the intent of this board or the commission of the town is, but rather to encourage compatibility uh, with surrounding houses, neighborhoods, um, and aesthetics that are um, I know aesthetics are always subjective, but if there's a way to codify um, what could be objective uh, in a way that you have an up or down vote uh, and you could articulate that to the commission in a way that they'd be comfortable saying, you know, either approve it and it goes forward or, or send it away with conditions and it comes back, sometimes that drives negotiation. Um, even you heard the applicant here today very willing to tweak and adjust to, to make sure that their property was um, palatable to the town, um, but we don't always get that. Some, sometimes we get people that tell us we can't tell them what their intent is and as long as they're meeting code, have a nice day. Uh, we want to find that happy middle ground. So um, that's kind of the, the challenge here is where, where is that line between subjective and objective and something that we could actually uh, use to check off. and. Um, I, and one of my greatest concerns is it would be just like this morning. We had a, uh, an applicant that really spoke from the podium that said they want to do these things. But they can take things that now to Wayne 
that are fit the strict code and not have to even uh, meet the words that they put at the podium. Uh, that, nothing to prevent that. Right. That, that's the concern. And so I, th I think the basic uh, premise is if, if the PNZ had an up or down vote or had a way to uh, get true negotiations or a way to send a project away and have it come back because something is um, really askew from our code, uh, that would be the optimal wording and, and power we could get the commission to um, cede to you. Uh, and it would make for better projects in the long run for the town uh, where there is willing negotiation to have things look, feel, and work uh, very closely to the town code and to the aesthetic uh, threshold that the town likes to see in its projects. Good, thank you. Um, Wayne, do you have anything to add to that? I, um, I share uh, Rick's uh, s s sentiments, and and um, you know, I, I pretty much agree with, with, with what he's saying. So, Good, thank you. That's pretty much it. Um, and Marty, our town consultant, uh, previous meetings we've uh, suggested that perhaps you might look at some standards that we could consider uh, that you might think, from a professional standpoint are appropriate standards, uh, and, and, and even if they're only minimal standards, but at least something to begin. Because I think we've also heard the comment that we're one of the few, if, if only town, uh, particularly coastal town, without any standards uh, to, to guide our, our future and our future aesthetics. So, Marty, any any comment in that regard? <coughs> in that regard. Yes, good morning. Thank you. Uh, Happy New Year for the record. Marty Miner with Urban Design Kill Day Studios. Um, yes, uh, one of the things that were mentioned earlier, code amendments are going to be associated with whatever ends up happening. You have to have standards. You are the Planning and Zoning Board. You have a specific and uh, incredible amount of expertise. And the way for this review process to work better is to better employ your expertise, not only within the town, but within the industry. Um, that can go on several ways. You know, basically you're looking for, we have to create new standards for you to help interpret, interpret and make those decisions. Um, quickly, just the, the, the processes I, I would see is the three options. One's the currently the current process, which uh, has, hasn't been working out. Uh, a second option is that the board ends up becoming a recommendation board that would make recommendations on some of these uh, petitions coming forward that would move on to the town commission for final approval. I'm not sure if that's all in. I haven't talked to the town commission on that, but that's one of the options. The other option is on certain development approval aspects, you, you set a, a limit of either size or just any house that this board would be the uh, deciding factor. They would make the recommendation, uh, for, you know, would make the approval. Uh, Mr. Cameron would actually sign the permits, but the approval would be from this board and any kind of appeal to that would go on up to the town commission. Those are the three pathways I see forward on this. Um, those are some of my Good. And Marty, now for the difficult question, <laughs> yes. and that is, with regard to option number three, do you have any suggestions as to uh, the, the type of criteria that uh, we might judge and vote on up or down? Yeah, uh, some of the is uh, real basic, I think, architectural standards. Uh, you can even apply that to landscaping, but things like a consistent beam all the way around the building. So you don't have a certain styles on one side, but on the back side it's, it's something different. You don't see that a lot, but every once in a while you'll do when someone has a uh, particular design in mind. Um, those type of aspects where they can seem subjective from the outside, but you give them criteria 
that there is a consistency, there is uh, it, it, there's a sufficient covering of landscaping, those type of ideas, but you have to create a, a measurable impact on that, you know, that you can okay. make the judgment from. So we have two items, a consistent architectural theme, and number two, um, a landscaping that is uh, covering yeah, the entire just, uh, site. Those are the, probably the, new, the two largest ones, and you sort of expand from there. Yeah. Okay. Any other specific uh, items? Not right off. Well, and Mark, sorry. Oh. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I, you know, I share the concerns of some of the commission. You know, we don't want to be here regulating, you know, styles and colors and everything. Um, I do that for a living, and it's not fun. Um, but I think we have come, like we did with the open space. Our code was such a zoning code; it was never intended to have any aesthetic or any architectural elements, apart from some fairly basic massing criteria. But I think we've come to the point now, the crossroads again, where if we're serious about maintaining, you know, the, the ambience and the character of the town, we need to instill some form of aesthetic review. Yeah. And my question to Marty, because I know he works for a number of other communities, can we not create a fairly basic, to the word subjective, I fight that <laughs> daily. Um, I think we just need some basic criteria by which this board or the commission can use to at least make a, a strong recommendation, if not mandate, you know, some right. some revision yeah, or. There, there are basic standards that we can include within the code for the decision making without. Yeah, we, we don't need to, uh, and as I said, I don't see it, you know, yeah. if, if a color is totally off the wall, then I think we can put our hands up and say, you know, we're a little concerned here. But I think if we just have some basic criteria by which, and it, help, it helps the applicants as well as whoever's reviewing it. it, it and um, I think I, that's my personal sure. feeling is that I think we just need to have, we don't need to regiment it, uh, regulate it to the nth. No. But we've got to start, you know, and, and hopefully um, address some of what the, you reported the commission concerns were. And this indeed is um, what I'm struggling to come up with in my mind is what might be some of those objective slash subjective criteria that we might use. <laughs> in our well, that's, process. that's where I think Marty's expertise has to help us here, or guide us, and we we can edit or whatever we wish to do. Sure. But I think if we have some kind of, we'll you can do that. Okay, good. And are there other other towns, uh, Marty, that uh, might be a good example uh, that we might want to consider? Uh, towns similar to this town. Yes, it would probably be a look at a, a variety of communities on the island. Okay. Nothing jumps out as sort of okay. no, that we should follow. I think we will probably look at and see what would be most appropriate for this town and amend it to, the, okay. to fit what we're trying to do. And then Mark made a comment about um, strong subjections, su suggestions. Um, and again, I go back to the dilemma that we faced, a strong su suggestion, recommendation, um, doesn't necessarily advance our cause here. Mark, uh, you know? Well, I think it, it opens a discussion or dialogue as to if, whether it's a concern or not, I, I think that Marty hinted on it earlier, is if this commission board, um, say, makes a motion that to reject a project based on some criteria, applicants then move to the commission. That's the appeal sure. process. So that's always available. Yes. 
um, and I, Marty, correct me if I'm wrong, but that works successfully in other communities. Yes. Yeah. So good. So that's one idea, I, and I would want to put that on the table as a specific idea because right now we're lacking that step. Yeah. Okay. Good. So let's let's keep that as a uh, a, a definite uh, item for serious further consideration as part of the criteria. Neil, you had a comment? Yeah. Um, Marty, uh, do you find that our uh, description of the town's characteristics is pretty lacking in the existing comp plan? Uh, that, yes. That, <laughs> that to do any, to advance any of these things, we need a, a, a much better baseline of what's here already. And, and where it's located. Yes. Uh, the descript that would be the foundation for which these standards, which would be in the code, would be built off of. Correct. You would have this um, description of the existing and a description of what's desired in the town. I, I'd, I'd like to see us put more effort into that part of, of the future comp plan. I, I think it, a baseline is, is required. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, before we come back to board discussion, let me just open it up for a moment to any uh, comments from the audience. Does anybody in the audience have any comments? Yes, sir, please. Good morning and uh, Happy New Year to you all. Martin Wieschelek, Five Engel Drive. Um, I've seen this before. Uh, the, the problem with the subjective part that you're dealing with is subjective is something that can be legally challenged. And subjective is usually what, what, gets, what gets people rallied up because you're denying somebody and somebody else you're letting slide and it's subjective. Yeah. And, and I understand where you're coming from and I understand that you're trying to streamline it. My suggestion would be to make sure that, for example, with the door, we, we have an owner here who is clearly an owner and who wants to be a neighbor uh, who, who listens to what your recommendations are. If the, object, if the objection is the red door, for example, or the color combination of that red door, how far that red should be, we should consider or the, the sport should consider recommending to the uh, commission to bring forward an ordinance that regulates the color schemes of accent doors or accent windows or colors in general for a house. So my suggestion is to, to really not try to get into the subjective part and denying or recommending, maybe find a, find a tool where you can shut down a process where you can say, you know what, no, this needs to go to the commission. We need to, if there's something that is grave of grave concern to this board. Uh, find a way where it needs to go to the commission for an approval and where it needs to go f for, for specific, with specific recommendations from, from this board. But, um, but don't put yourself in a legal position where you shut it down uh, for a subjective objection. Fix it through the code, don't fix it on the subjective basis. Good, thank you. Any other members of the audience with comment? Yes. <laughs> you can jump up first. You can grab the microphone first. Yeah, it's, it's a theme, isn't it? Good morning, Christine DeHass at 29 Sable Island Drive. I'm addressing you this morning as a resident, not as a commissioner. Um, I can feel a little bit of the, the angst, and I will have to tell you, I actually came out of the last commission meeting with a very different feeling. It is the first time we have opened Pandora's box just a little. <laughs> so I will remind all of you, there are five commission seats. The mayor has only one vote on that seat. And there's two commission seats coming available in March. Go forward, bring forward what you want, and it can always be shot down. It can always be added to, but I wouldn't have any hesitancy whatsoever. Thank you, Christine. Any other comments? Uh, Don, please. Uh, Don Magruder, Nine Ridge Boulevard. Um, I attended a uh, Gulfstream town meeting on uh, Friday. 
and there was a conceptual review in, before the commission on Friday on a new house uh, on um, <coughs> was it Polo Drive on Polo Drive. The commission um, had the roof color changed because it was too much like the house next door. They had the, uh, the front, I believe, was changed. Uh, there was a ficus tree, and they're very big on the trees over there. So the um, planner was going to take the ficus tree down. The commission said, you're not going to take the tree down. Next came up and said, well, we can move it. So after about a five-minute discussion, they said, well, to move a ficus tree of that size is probably, you might as well cut it down because it's not going to, it's not going to be transplantable. So then the commission said, well, we're going to leave the tree where it is. We're not going to let you move it. We're not going to let you cut it down. That resulted in a change in the drive. And so these were the, the items that I remember that we discussed to make that house fit in with the neighborhood. And me personally, not as a commissioner or whatnot, I think what you need to do is go back to what I've always said, what's to the left, what's to the right, what's across the street, and what's in back. Mm -hmm. And that, you want that house to fit within the neighborhood. And someone said, I guess I could bring this up at this time, um, a picture is worth a thousand words. So, um, Tracy, would you, uh, I have uh, 12 pictures that I'd like you to look at. <coughs> I think there's 12. So here's a house that's being built, and you can see that it really doesn't look. Go back one, Tracy. Go back no, to that. It's one. Going on is it on a roll? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, sure. we'll go down this, this street right. So this is what. Now here, here's a picture right here. So here's a nice little house. Here's another nice little house, and you can see what's next door to it. This is the same one. The house, the smaller house is to the existing house. Neighborhood is to the, to the left. Here's a here's one with a sloping roof. <laughs> There's another house with a new house next door to it. Where are these done? <laughs> Hopefully, they're not in Ocean Ridge. That's oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. my point. That doubt right. <laughs> So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Okay. Any other audience members with comments? Yes, please. Uh, Zoanne. Zoanne Hennigan, 91 Island Drive South. My only comment or suggestion might be to get involved with these homes earlier in the process. I think at the stage that you get involved in the process, the homeowners, architects, everybody is so committed and it's so hard to make a change. So if you get involved at the beginning, it's a lot easier to sway them to make sure that they meet whatever criteria that you, even subjective criteria that you feel that they need to meet to keep the, the flavor of Ocean Ridge that we want. Good, thank you. And to that point, um, Wayne, do you see that opportunity or by the time it gets to you for your first review, is it pretty much cast in stone? No, we've got, uh breaks in the system before it gets that far. There is quite a bit of dialogue and an opportunity for, for the applicants to come <coughs> in and discuss projects before they get too far down the road. And in fact, the concept plan review is, is, is geared towards that, um, to bring what the applicant's thinking about before they go into getting a full set of building set plans drafted. Let's make sure that before that expenditure takes place, is it gonna meet the conformity of what the town's looking for? Yeah, I think that's what we got under the concept criteria. I, I agree. Earlier the better. So hopefully you can broadcast that to owners or applicants that, you know, it's it's better to come in with a concept. Uh, this uh, 42 is a good example of that. Um, Don, with all due respect, I 
the two towns I do most of my work are Palm Beach and Gulf Street. And if you want to see subjective <laughs> criteria, you can, it's, our in Palm Beach is the, the country's toughest review board. Yeah. But I, I think to the point, and as uh, that gentleman said, you know, um, I think we need to, we don't want to get to that level. I think we want to just com create a, a, a kind of a menu that's pretty basic in terms of scale, some conceptual colors, type of fenestration, you know, flat versus slope. That's a whole other argument which we'll, or discussion we'll have. But I think we need to have something. As I keep saying, it helps the applicants. Um, it's not just, you know, any board or any commission that's reviewing it. But Gulfstream is, they are allowed to do that because they have a, a very detailed man, manual. Right. Which. Uh, and this, uh, my pictures were obviously not taken in, in Palm Beach County. They were Key Biscayne. But there's a, well, yeah. it's an example. That's a whole other zone. <laughs> a, it is. And it, it, it has to do with what's approved and what's mm -hmm. not approved. And where I'm going back was the same thing that Zoanne picked up on, was that a conceptual review. And when I'm saying left and right, I would like to see them come in with a conceptual review with photographs of the house to the left and the house to the right so that you all can see is that place going to fit in. And it has more not so much to do with the colors and whatnot, but it has to do with the size and the scope and the shape of the home. And as I showed you on the, on the ones in, in Key Biscayne, I mean, they have a lot of the old, I guess those were uh, right after World War II, the old three-bedroom, one-bath, the three-bedroom, two-bath homes that are being replaced. But the, that community is going to the larger boxier homes to, because of the value of the property itself. They're coming in, they're tearing down the homes, they're building those big block homes that take as much space on the lot as they can. And so, you know, to be facetious a little bit, I don't want to see Ocean Ridge go that way, but that's the design that we're starting to see coming into Ocean Ridge, and that's up to you all to decide whether or not you want it to go that way or you want to put some restrictions on it. Well, I think, Marty, that's a good, um, one of those towns I mentioned does require that you do a silhouette of the adjacent properties just immediately. I think it's 200 feet on either side, because that's one of my biggest fears is the scale versus an existing uh, owner or uh, neighbor. And it can be very simple. We all have Google Maps and Google Earth or whatever they call it. So it's not as difficult to get it. at least, it doesn't have to be every detail. It just needs to be really the mass and scale. I think that that's one of the criteria that would be helpful. Um, so I, I think, but again, I. I I want to jump forward, leap forward here a little bit. Um, I, I was in a discussion and I'm hoping, I'd like to poll this commission and, and make sure that the commission is, uh, feels comfortable. You know, I think we all have our, our technical specialties and, and expertise, but would this commission be fully comfortable in reviewing these concept plans with some crit basic criteria, taking that responsibility on? Uh, I would. I feel like it's more appropriate is uh, to give those comments early on. Yeah, I just, I, I, I'm talking about, I don't think we, I think we now have Wayne. We have a good, I think, good working commission. I don't think we need to look. We got Marty to bounce some of the technical aspects and the authorship of whatever it is. But I think I just want to be comfortable that everybody here would be willing to, you know, play that role or not play that Absolutely. role, sorry, yeah. <laughs> represent Absolutely. that. Yeah. Uh, Jim? I would, like, <clears throat> I would like to see the process be a credible process in the mm -hmm. eyes of the general population of Ocean Ridge. And that would entail consistent standards that can be applied consistently. consistently. It wouldn't be like the Olympic ice skating competition where Eastern Bloc nations could blow them up. No doping, all right? <laughs> no, no doping. So I would be comfortable with it if we went through a process where we developed standards 
which we consistently have the same image of what those standards mean when applied. Yeah, but I wouldn't want to get involved with a process where everybody would say, well, that's not fair. You judge this house this way, this house this way. Well, that's, that's part of the question is, you know, if we undertake this responsibility, it's got to be fair. I, I don't think it should be on one individual or two individuals. I think it has to come through a board or commission where there can be dialogue and not everybody's going to agree, but at least you, you, sh you know, you share a concern and, and everybody might have a different concern, but I think it's a fair way for an applicant to, to get response. Let me ask a question about the land development code. Right now it's very minimalistic and I think that's been the attitude of the town obviously for several generations. Do we need to have a more, I won't say aggressive, but a more active uh, look at projects that we see that have pushed a boundary and why do we have to wait till it's the second or third iteration of somebody pushing that boundary before we say that that needs a response, that needs a, another piece of code. Flat roofs are an example. Uh, air conditioners that are higher than chimneys on tops of buildings, items like that. Why does it take such a long time to say no more? We can't go back, I understand that, but there's quite a few things that we've seen around the town that we know we wouldn't like to see it done a second or third time. And I don't think we have a, a process that says quarterly or whatever, submit for review things that you've seen that you would like to have discussed and perhaps through that we develop a, a code of things that we've, we've seen that give us something that takes us from more subjective to objective. So Neil, in that regard then, maybe one mechanism to accomplish that would be for members of the public or members of the commission to request that an item be put on the agenda. Absolutely, that's exactly where I'm going. And then recommendation to these town commission for action. Just, just like uh, 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 Mr. Marsh did at the last uh, meeting and said he'd like, like us to do that with the flat roof. So I think there's several items that are like that. And I think that should be a normal part of our process right. now. If we, if we want to move forward to being more objective, I think the, the code is just going to have to be more detailed than it is now. And, and, and it's a ongoing <laughs> process and we accomplish it to repeat by freely adding items to the agenda. And do we have that, does the public have that ability now, uh, Tracy and Jamie, to add items to this agenda? Not the public. Not the, it comes through your administration, okay. through the clerk's office or administration. Requests come to us and then Got we... Uh, Either a staff recommendation or a member recommendation. Or a member right, recommendation. or a member, yes. yeah, we would bring it uh, forward okay. for consideration for just that purpose. And Another um, process we've used in the past, and I don't think we've really talked about it here, um, to, to address what Neil's talking about is, um, you know, uh, the land development regulation, sometimes um, you've got your board of adjustments, you have your planning and zoning board and your commission, and we've, I've worked in cities where we've sat all three boards down and gone through the LDRs page by page, line by line, item by item to, to flush out or to, to extract out the things that are problematic or to updates that are outdated that need to be looked at, things like that, but that's a arduous task to bring that um, to fruition. So. I think the recommendation that Neil's making now where you see specific things that get under your skin, it would be a good idea to bring those like we did on this agenda with flat roof discussion, you know, bring them forward as a single item and say, this seems to be problematic in the town. Good. You know, can we have a talk amongst ourselves and come up with some suggestions that might be implemented into the code to correct or address those issues? Um, well, and to... Um answer um, Mark's question about our comfort zone. Um, I think this board is fortunate today that we have a professional on this board, a professional architect, 
who can make observations regarding things like menstruation. Um, I would be concerned that if we were just lay people sitting on this board, uh, we might go off in uh, very subjective and biased directions. Whereas with a professional, we, we have you know, comments that can keep us grounded. Us. And, and so having somebody like Mark on a board like this, I think is important. But I'm curious as to, in other communities, do they have members of a board who, uh, who of architectural review boards, who do have some experience, or is it just a bunch of lay people spouting off whatever that comes to their mind? Uh, I've seen several communities where they uh, require uh, um, at least uh, several members to be either architect, a planner, an engineer, someone within the land development industry to be part of the members to provide a baseline of expertise. So that's a board membership requirement. Is it written or is it just by it custom? Is, it is written. It is written, okay. I, I can just give you a point of view. Years ago in Delray Beach, we had rather more strict guidelines as far as who could be members of the board and what we found out there and we modified it to make it more lenient because sometimes you run into having people fill those specific slots. Yeah. And so I, my only concern would be in a small town like Ocean Ridge, you might want to be careful <clears throat> about that and not have specific slots, but I mean you can certainly have written guidelines to say, you know, if we can, let's try to get people with this background, but nothing set in stone. Yeah, a good example is Gulfstream doesn't really have, they're all lay people. Mm -hmm. But they have that manual, which is their kind of Bible that, you know, they interpret sure. from. I, again, I, please don't go there. <laughs> no. Well, um, I, I think, um, Mark, to that point also, um, Gulfstream, does not Gulfstream mandate a Bermuda look? And therefore, it would be impossible to build a contemporary home in Gulfstream. Yes. yes. Well, they, they have, and there, there have been challenges, and, and that's what's going to face us here. Yeah. I mean, there's that horrible word, precedent. Yeah. You know, that when does the, yeah. the um, horse bolt <laughs> the barn or whatever that <laughs> thing is. So one of the problems that we were faced with is on one hand, if we go the Gulfstream route, we have a nice, harmonious community where everything looks, resembles each other. Yeah, each we're, home. we're not a gated community, we're so please, a, right. let's, no. I've sat on enough gated community boards and you don't want to go there because then it I'm, becomes a look-alike. I'm and totally I, with you on that. I think that's the unique, uniqueness of Ocean Ridge. We can afford a blend of architecture that can complement or sustain the town's image Good. without, but we just need to corral it a little yeah. bit. And Mark, in your opinion professionally, should that include allowing contemporary homes in this town to fit into a neighborhood That's where, a powerful the question. Homes, <laughs> where the homes on either side are more traditional? You're asking the wrong guy, because in 42 years of practice, I haven't done a flat roof. So, but, 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 <laughs> not in Florida, anyway. No, no, but even on a flat roof house, just the contemporary houses that have been built. Uh, is, is that an enhancing factor, and does it add character to our neighborhoods or not? I think to Don's point is that if there is an area in town that lends itself to that kind of, and, and I can't think of one, but having it just kind of leap into a neighborhood or a community, you know, a street and be such a jarring, uh, you know, addition to the street, that's yeah. where it has more impact. If you have, say, a, let's just use Island Drive on the, on the water sure. where you live. If that becomes all contemporary on that whole wing, then 
you know, you can sure. say that, but it's hard. Again, you can't mandate that so and, and yet in community after community along the coast, in particular Delray, Boca, Highland Beach, uh, we're seeing uh, very contemporary homes pop up next door to traditional homes. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's a... It's an important question. But we're, I, I think to, uh, to Don's comment, uh, you know, would it be okay if that was a single story contemporary home that was next to the small ranch style with the, the red Mediterranean tile roof versus the house that's, you know, uh, got a 32 foot front face with, with uh, uh, the shiny uh, brown fake wood stone or whatever it is on the facade uh, I think that's where we're the line we're trying there, there to is make. one criteria that is used and I will quote it's called similar and dissimilar <laughs> and that that is a very um, it's a strict and it, it, I've seen it used very effectively um, where you if you have a concern that it's so dissimilar to the, the street or in the neighborhood that you have some criteria by which you can discourage that. But again, you know, there is subjective nature there, um, but there's an ordinance on the books that can be, can be Thank you. upheld. Rick, just if, sure. if you'll hold for a moment, a member of the audience, please. Uh, I just want to mention something because I'm new in town and we moved from Boca. And prior to that, we used to live in Miami, and the main reason why we moved and we chose this town is because of the architectural and the fact that everything is so traditional and small, and it's not this, you know, um, big buildings and uh, mastodon homes and everything. So we actually agree with the, you know, regulations and everything because that makes what this town is. And I hope it's going to stay this way, honestly. So, like, you know, prior, you know, owners and people said, you know, you don't want next to your house, uh, you know, different design, architectural, uh, that has nothing to do with the rest of the, you know, area. This is what mm -hmm. makes this, I'm a realtor for 15 years, and nobody knows about this town, but the people that do know about this town, they say the same thing. Good. It's just perfect. It, it's small, it's beautiful, it keeps that Florida architectural, you know, tradition, and I think, I think that's what makes Ocean Ridge different than any, you know, any other towns yeah. around. So, just Good. saying, that's Thank why you. we chose that, and we love it, and we want to keep it that way. We come from a 6,000 square feet home, and honestly, I'm glad that it's only 3,000 square feet now, because it's better, it's beautiful, and it looks perfect. And it fits, it fits the neighbors. Mm -hmm. I not even moved in, we drive here every day to, with the kids, but we love everybody around, and everybody has the same goals. So I, I'm just saying. Good. So thank you. Thank, thank you. And uh, I'm Rick. not a good speaker. <laughs> no, you are. You are. You're very. You're very good. Thank you. Uh, Rick, please. A few thoughts. Uh, I think the job of the town commission and this board is to keep Ocean Ridge, Ocean Ridge, and we need to make sure that. Um, that that flavor that was just expressed yes. continues on. And there's a, a tension between uh, the people who are the Ocean Ridge residents and the um, uh, builders and developers whose job is to build and develop. And I've worked for builders and developers for much of my career. And the land development, as Marty knows, is pretty much maximize what I can get in value from this piece of property. Uh, and if that means a bigger box on that piece of property, these aren't Ocean Ridge residents for the most part. They're, uh, you know, um, sometimes they're building for someone, but they're building, they're building for the objective of maximizing that development, which can be very inconsistent with what the neighborhood and the flavor is. And if we leave our land development code loose, uh, we are low hanging fruit when it's hard to go and develop a contemporary home in uh, Gulfstream or Palm Beach or Manalapan or where the criteria that 
they're going to see an, uh, a home and and uh, and it's an easy knockdown, and we get uh, the maximize on that. And it's our job is to protect this community and the flavor. Uh, and if that means we have to have uh, more standards in our land development code, that's going to be part of it. There's a a huge gap between where Gulfstream is today and where we are today. And if we moved 25% up from where we are, I think we could do a lot for the community. Can I make that as a motion? <laughs> well, uh, and, uh, yes, Christine, please. I love this discussion. This is the kind of stuff that makes me all excited. Um, one of the things I looked up in our comp plan from 1989, thank you, we need your help desperately. Residential community character. The town has a unique character due to its predominantly low density residential land use, extensive water access, and lush landscape. The role of the automobile is downplayed due to the convenience of pedestrian and bike circulation. The challenge of this plan is to preserve and enhance this character. The commercial services for the town are provided adequately by Boynton Beach. So to your point, um, Member Hennigan, I think it starting with your, your comprehensive plan, which is your guiding Bible, your, your foundation, your basis, and really either adding up what, you know, adding to what this says, or, you know, if, if I was reading this and it says the convenience of pedestrian and bike circulation, to me that says we should probably have a sidewalk everywhere, but that's not what we want. No. So, but this is how you start to, 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 to mold and everything. And it gives you the basis that if you do have litigation, unfortunately, which will come, you have a basis to say, this is, you can't really sue us. You know, this is, this is what we believe in. So I think you guys are on the right, right yeah, that's, path. That's a statement and there's very little criteria to support it. But I'm saying you can, you can add to this criteria that's within your That's where I think we're all heading is sure. that we've Correct. got to get a little bit more uh, reference to be able to be to be more. Well, I yeah, have the town judgment. manager's copy. If anybody would like to borrow it for me, can I get that back eventually? No. <laughs> <laughs> and, and please, just for the record, our comp plan is online for anybody yeah, that and, and, likes to read and, it. And, and I looked at it over the weekend, and there's a lot to it. <laughs> yeah. Very difficult reading. Um, Marty, uh, are we being helpful? Are we are we giving you guidance that you can come back to us next meeting with some meat that we can consider and recommend to the town commission? Yes, sir. Yes, you, you, this has been a very enlightening discussion, and I will come back to you. You want more? <laughs> as much as you want to give. <laughs> Wait, have, have we helped you? Yes, you have. Okay, um, good. But in, primarily because I'm an enforcement arm of this uh, yeah. discussion. So unless it's in an ordinance and unless it's in the code, I, I'm, my hands are tied. Okay, so good. I, I, I welcome your comments. Good, thank you. Uh, Neil, any further comments on this No, I just, I, I, I'll reiterate uh, what Christine said and, and uh, what's been said up here. I think it needs to come top down with development code and bottom up with comp plan. I think we good. need to, to get to the point where we Made, made a 25% or more improvement or something, whatever, but th I, I think we have to drive it from both ends sure. to Understood. objectively for Wayne and subjectively so Understood. that we can. Jim, any further comment? No, no? Uh, Rick, anything else? No. Uh, Mark? No. So, um, yes, so in, please. Zoanne Hennigan, 91 Island Drive South. This has been fabulous. And as I've been sitting here, I just tried to want to summarize because sometimes these discussions, you get sort of lost in the, in, the, in the detail. So it sounds to me that the objective here of, of this group and the commission is to protect Ocean Ridge as Ocean Ridge. And there's three main objectives, and they're not necessarily in the same order, but we need a better description of the town we need to do this earlier in the process, and probably the biggest key is more specifics in the land development code or land development regulations, and a process to develop all the low-hanging fruit first with this group that you can come up you know, from, from all of this group and, and start knocking out the details. 
Thank you. And then may I add to that the very fundamental point as to whether or not we want the ability to um, stop a project from uh, a home project, for example, from proceeding to building permit and 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 either uh, make them come back to us with revisions or uh, recommend that they make a recommendation that they have to go to the uh, town commission for an up or down vote. Is, do we all agree that we want that definite ability to stop uh, a, a, a home being built or recommend it to go to the commission for a yes or no vote. We, we want that team. Is that, do we agree on that? Yes. yes. Right, we do. Okay, good. Okay. Well, I would say we want it if we have criteria that can be we, yeah, absolutely. judiciously, Correct. consistently well, yeah. applied, yes. right. repeatedly, good. so that no one questions our yeah, no arbitrary. Good, okay. Marty, Bear? Bear. Good. So do you need a, uh, uh, a, a vote from us? I, I think I'm not... Consensus. Yeah, I, I think we, staff and, and everyone has consensus on what you're looking for, so... That's great. We're good. Okay, great. So then let's move right along to... Uh, I've got uh, to leave <coughs> 10 minutes. Okay, well, let's cover the flat roof item. Please. Uh, please, yeah, which is item number five on the agenda. Don't let Mark. No, we, can't let, we can't let you go, Mark. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is your poster child. So no, no, no I'm not. Uh, uh, Tracy, uh, just a quick bit of background, if you would, please. Or, or Jamie. Thank you. I want a memo. <laughs> well, real briefly, uh, this is a conversation that came up at your last meeting and then went uh, to some conversation at the commission level. And I think for the first time uh, last month when you met, we heard some movement on this board uh, based on some back and forth you had with uh, some applicants in the audience about the, the problem from phenomenon that you see in the town, which are these ultra high parapets going on all over to yes. essentially masquerade uh, the requirement for a pitched roof in our building code. And I think there was, um, an acknowledgement that perhaps you would reconsider and look at our code and look at the phenomenon of flat roofs because many, uh, I think it was an architect uh, in the audience at the time that suggested that the town might uh, benefit by allowing flat roofs in certain circumstances that would actually bring down the profile or the massing of the building by eliminating the need to masquerade a pitched roof, right. drainage off the roof and other things that uh, seemed to propel them upward to the full building height. Um, there was some consensus that came out of this board that you might want to look at that issue and see if there was a, a, a place to land there and see if there was something that we might be able to do that under certain circumstances uh, it would be permissible to amend our code to uh, allow that, Thanks, that style in certain and Mark, cases. do you have a professional opinion on that subject? I, my statement stands, I said, basically, let's, or masquerade is a great uh, analogy for that. Um, it is, it's either flat or it's pitched. You know, this, this hybrid that we have right. Uh, right. created in this town where you, you create a very high uh, vertical surface to masquerade or hide a pitched, I think is totally wrong. Um, Good. Which leads to the question, do we allow flat roofs or not? Um, how do we discourage them? As I said earlier, I'm not a big advocate of flat roofs because this is a tropics and you want to shed water as quickly as possible. But I, I'd like to, again, ask Marty to come back to this commission with some criteria that, one, that deny flat roofs, and two, that allow flat roofs on the certain criteria, such as limiting the height of parapets and that kind of criteria and see what what that creates in terms of, a, again, another menu 
for options. I don't think we're in a position of making a, you know, an up and down recommendation on flat roofs versus no, not flat, no flat roofs. Can we expand the consideration to not only looking at whether it's parapeted or not, but to the actual physical height of the exterior perimeter walls? Which is a, per currently that's what the parapet is, the top of the parapet is. The Correct, but the top of the parapet now is being defined by the, the max height which right, that's what I'm saying. It, that's, yeah, well, that's so. That's, that's my point. Is yeah. that? Yeah. Good, good point. And Marty, can there, you include that? If you take the if you take the pitch roof out, we 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 still think, or people still think they can go up to that limit. I think it should be no, very no, well, clear uh, yeah, that that's there's. A, yeah, and I'm not, that's what I was asking him, because there is uh, criteria on the books in some towns that limit the height of that parapet as a total flat roof in lieu of the masquerading. Yes. And it, it, it brings the scale down tremendously. Good point. It's a point of, I'd, I'd like, to, if you could bring back some of those reference points so to and, address. And, and second consideration is uh, defining a, a single story height for a house. Uh, hmm. Because the second criteria is the max height that we have for the tie beam. Right, and the ridge height. And the ridge height. And both of those are assuming, assuming a two-story or a story and a half or whatever type house, that maybe we ought to define a single-story house for the first time. Okay. Marty, is that yeah. are all those things possible yes. within your professional consulting ability? Good, um, Rick, please. This of the two items that we have here that were at the town commission. This was the one that had the most uh, passion by the town commissioners. And my sense of it is they don't like flat roofs. Just now, uh, you know, there may be a compromise, but there wasn't a lot of excitement about flat roofs in this town. Uh, not, and that meant parapets, anything that looks like a flat roof. Uh, is there any reason if we so chose, and the commission so chose, that uh, the town banned that type of uh, of a roof, and and is there a problem with that from an well, architectural a, standpoint? That's why I think we need to look at some historical references. Yeah, okay. I I was quite surprised by you know the the number of comments that were they didn't like the parapets, they don't like the flat roofs, they don't like sure yeah and and yet yeah. with Yet, on the other hand, uh, we, we need to recognize the aesthetic legitimacy of, of a contemporary home and the sometimes character it adds to a neighborhood. And, and I'm, my problem is I don't think there's an all good or an all bad. I think there's a, a harmony factor that needs to be factored into this whole equation. But, Jim, any other comments? No, I would, no. I would agree with your last statement, Tom. Yeah. Good. Any members of the uh, of the public, the audience, who have comment? Yes, sir, please. <laughs> no, please, and no, we need you. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Seriously. Seriously. Five angle. Thank you. Um, the, the flat roof, correct me if I'm completely off here, but the flat roof really comes in on the modern contemporary homes. Correct. It's, a, it's an architectural feature that is practically necessary for modern contemporary. It sounds to me more like that there's a consensus that modern contemporary is not an architectural style that is desirable to the commission members, it's desirable to this board. Again, if that is the case, I disagree with it. I love these homes, yeah. but if that is the case, then it needs to get regulated. Sure. Um, as far as the roofs are concerned, um, you know that better than me. Can we? I think right now the code is a 12-4 pitch. 
12, and yeah. um, maybe we can go to a 12-1 pitch. Would that alleviate the uh, the flooding problems? The, the, well, you the have to water a inch a foot, you know that drain. So you, you're going to have some elevation, but it's not going to be, you know, six or seven feet. Which it's not going to run off as quick as the other ones. Yeah, but it, it, they but are there's flat. modern there's modern techniques for roofs oh, sure. today yeah. that that make it drain much faster than the Correct. old with the gravel and uh, yeah, it, that just absolutely. holds water. The issue on the is roof. masking or hiding yeah. a pitched roof. The pitched roof. Which, which I completely agree with. It, it, may, it makes no right. sense building a, a three-foot, four-foot parapet in order to hide a roof. That, uh, it's, it's ridiculous. I agree with that. So basically what I'm, what I'm saying is either, either say modern contemporary is an architectural style that is not desired for this town. We don't want it. Regulate it. Or you know, right. let, these, let these flat roofs come. Because you, this is one of the things that, uh, that the vice mayor is bringing out. Is you, you're coming... The reality of this town is this. A property underwater costs a million dollars plus. This is the reality. This is an old ho home somewhere that is underwater. This is a million dollars, and it's a million dollars because of the land. It's not a million dollars because it's, it's an old 50s uh, ranch-style home. So that home is going to get destroyed. It's going to get ripped down. It's going to get replaced with something that is to today's standard. Doing the one, the, the single story home, I think is unnecessary because nobody in this town that's going to take down a building, an existing building, is going to rebuild it as a single family. It's going to go two story no matter what, simply because you have a million dollars on the footprint yes. that you're investing already. You're not going to put a hundred thousand dollar home on a million dollar piece of land. So we're looking at we're looking at basically architectural styles that you need to consider or deconsider to be better. That's why I keep Thank you. this dissimilar, similar is a, is a criteria by which you can. Yeah. Mark, is your definition of hybrid um, the pitched roof behind the parapet? Or what, it, what do you call, is it a mixed house when it's got the flat roof on one section of the house and, and like the big house we considered in December? That had the breezeway and the and the big garage that that had pitched roof. What what do you call that well, type? It is a hybrid. I mean, you're, you're you're mixing two roofing styles together. But the reason we're under our code, is we we do not allow flat roofs. Period. They have to have a four and twelve pitch. So what happens is that impacts the scale of the architecture tremendously, and that's what. I'm, I'm trying to fight against. Right, agree. Because that's, but I think I do have to leave here. Um, I think, Marty, if you could find, as this gentleman again correctly said, there are, there is language that can deny flat roofs that has been tested by certain communities. So we need to look at that as the more populous mm -hmm. approach and then look at it if flat roofs are allowed here are the reference points in terms of heights and mass so those are the two things we got to look at and and then we can discuss and, and but back to the mixed building that's got pitched and possibly flat i i i, I said it many times get rid of that because that, that's all. a charade you don't want that at all yeah, no because that, that's it's either flat or pitch. Yeah. yeah. So it's a duck. You know what the duck theory is. <laughs> so, Mark, before you leave, may I ask uh, Jamie, Brian, Wayne, uh, is, is, do we now have enough? Do you now have enough from this board? I think or, so. Working with the planner and okay, good. the technical you don't, sides you of You don't this. need a, a vote or anything at this Just point. Just consensus from you all. Okay, that, good. That's, what you're that's our consensus, at. I think. Are you satisfied that you've heard a consensus? Yes. Good. Thank you. Okay. Can I just interrupt with one? I have been approached to review a plan that's scheduled, I think, for Wednesday by an applicant. I would rather not do deal with applicants individually. You know, I don't want to give my opinion without the rest of the commission. Um, Did they approach you directly or through town? They direct, uh, okay. directly. You might refer them back through as staff I, uh, I, because I, of the potential conflict there. Right. I, I rather not, and this goes for any member. I don't think you want to deal with a one-on-one -on -one situation. 
just uh, so I mean, it's it's up to the member if they want to do it, but they would have to disclose that, right. hey, I and met I, with the I, person, this is what we talked about, and did all that. That's certainly, you know, you can do it if you want. It's right. But it's, you know, each individual member can make that determination on whether or not they want to meet with a developer one-on-one -on -one prior to a meeting. Just, if I may, to quickly reiterate what was said earlier, uh, staff promotes and uh, makes available pre-con meetings for anybody that would like them, and we encourage it because we find the value in troubleshooting this stuff uh, on the front end before it even, even yeah. gets to your level. Um, I, I just think it's unfair to put one party, you know, in that position. I, I think we should discourage that personally. Good. Okay, thank you, Mark. I'll thank let you. the record show that uh, Thanks, Mark. Mark Marsh is leaving the meeting. However, we still have a, uh, uh, a quorum and can deal with the last item on the agenda, which is number three, comp plan amendments. Um, Gracie or Jamie, would you please brief us on this? Well, this is, um, this is really the... Uh, the uh, planner portion of the show. <laughs> uh, Marty's been working on some things uh, to talk about potential uh, comp plan updates to the town, um, both compliant and things we might look at uh, to improve it. Um, he has a memo in your backup, but I'd like to invite him up to kick it off uh, Thank to, you, to tell us a little bit about where we are and where we need to go. Marty, please. Yes, good morning once again. Marty Miner, Urban Design, Kilda Studios. Uh, as, as we've been discussing, uh, we this started off looking at uh, the state requires us to update the comprehensive plan to address uh, sea level rise. And we've been working through the coastal management element and making some changes, and uh, we've, we've got a, a, a markup of that. Uh, at the last meeting, there was discussions that there was other aspects of the uh, the conference plan that needs to be looked at, and from that process, um, there was a request that uh, staff and that these boards uh, look through the documents and to provide additional input on what could be updated, what could be changed, any kind of questions. And so this is part of that process to get your input and then we'll come back with, uh, based on the input we've received from you and staff to revise a larger draft of the comprehensive plan for your review. And, and what is it that we as a board should consider and address today? Things you want to look at are, are things that um, that you see no longer uh, affect the city, no longer apply, uh, are somewhat outdated. Other things you can look at is things that are not even addressed, that has since become a, an issue of importance within the town uh, that needs to be uh, addressed and have a policy set for. Um, those are the type of things we're looking for, things that no longer need to be addressed or needs to be addressed that's not within the current document. Well, as I looked at the um, comp plan online over the weekend, uh, my head was swimming <laughs> <laughs> with all the stuff in it. Yeah. And w I asked myself, well, where do I start? How can, how can I be meaningful? And I, I didn't come up with an answer. <laughs> a, a, a good way of, of also doing that is going uh, element by element. You focus on future land use some elements. That is something that applies to you know what you do every month. It ties into the future land use element. The other aspects also apply, but not quite as directly. So that may be a good place to start. You know, you're good at this. Do you have any suggestions as to what we can do that's meaningful? <laughs> I, I think I made my major suggestion already that I, I just think it needs to be uh, much more descriptive. Uh, okay. Good point. In terms of 
the character of the town today and the character of the town that we see in the future? Well, the character of the town that we see in the document now is very, that's very antiquated. And, and I think language, referencing what Rick is saying, uh, to where, if we can develop a statement of where we want it to be, you know, whether, whether maintaining character is strongly developed in, in the comp plan or uh, the character that we, I don't know whether it's a negative thing or a positive thing. I think we try to, most of the things I think we're talking about here are, are, are negative. We're trying to keep things out, but we ha I think in the comp plan we have to state things in, in a positive see. way. Yes. And I think that's, that's harder to do something that's probably more in your bailiwick okay. than ours. Right. Um, I think that would be the... Right. And based on the input and discussion that we are having, will help me draft those kind of plans. Yeah, I think we've given you a lot of guidance today. Yeah, to, yeah. To very much. There. It's been very um, helpful. So, therefore, do we take this step by step and we deal with the couple of items that we've discussed today at length, um, flat roofs and getting this body criteria and teeth, and then we accomplish that, and then we move on, we move on to a bigger picture review of the comp plan. What, what would be meaningful for you from us today? Or the, the first three, uh, the, the slope proofs and conceptual plans, they're, in, they're not part of the comprehensive plan. Right. So um, while I'm preparing those and coming back to you on that uh, for the next meeting, if we could have specific areas that you look at, if you want to do uh, one element or the first three elements, and feel free to just look at it and mark it up. So give us an element that you think would, would, uh, would, it should be of immediate concern in the complex. One section. Future land use element. Future land use element. Okay, makes a lot of sense. Uh, show, uh, so you're giving us homework. Yes, I am. Okay. I figure we share it around. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pretty clever. <laughs> So, so therefore, uh, we have, and, and Jenny, can, can we, can we get some direction from you and Tracy and, and Wayne before the next meeting of maybe that document? I mean, you know, we know we can get it online, we know we can, we can, Sure, we could, um, if future land use, for example, is a, is a good priority start, we could do some excerpts from that and, and distribute it out to you so you could look at it so that you don't have to get the entire document or download the, or read the whole thing online, but kind of extract out um, things to focus on a little bit and give us some feedback and have that as part of the backup for the next meeting. Okay. Uh, so that we can also feed your responses in the party. Okay, good. Work. And do it in an orderly manner. So we're not coming back to you and Marty with a whole bunch of stuff uh, from 70 pages worth of comp plan, but give you some specific meaningful things regarding it's, this one section. It's very difficult to wordsmith by committee, so I, I would caution you all not to get deep into the minutiae of it, but look at it more conceptually uh, as to where you think either in that element or any other element um, you stumble upon some of the language is problematic uh, we heard a lot here today that just the description of the town is is outdated um, because it was written a long time ago and hasn't been updated and maybe the town as you see it today as you drive around might right. reflect a little bit of a different descriptor than than what's described in the uh, comp plan. So Absolutely. those are the kinds of things that if you see that or something jumps out at you, let us know and we'll we'll feed it to the planner. And Marty, would comments uh, such as trying to to say we we, uh, we we want to restrict the height of multifamily 
to four stories or three or six or whatever is, is are those specifics the kinds of things that you want or just the generality of, of saying ma maintain it to what we have today or any proposed changes yes specifics you, that would be appropriate okay okay if if i might add because it kind of dovetails onto that conversation if you remember when we had workshops with boynton utilities and i've mentioned this to you mr chair um, a really big future decision for the town is where we're going with potable water and sanitary yeah, sewer and mean, things that are yeah. uh, critical yes, yes. to a crossroads in the uh, uh, from yeah, density purposes, area. height purposes, everything. And there was much discussion uh, both in the charter review process as well as at the various board levels about where will the town be going in in the next several years, not if but when yes. uh, some of these things become absolutely essential or even uh, worse mandated uh, yes. by levels higher up sure um, the the various utility providers have stated that they could work constraints and uh, service levels and things into their systems and this town really hasn't taken on that that right. bear yet as to what that's going to look like and how that's going to impact everything not only from updating our existing infrastructure but providing uh, for a conversion at some point in time to um, from sanitary or from septic systems to potential at least uh, zone sanitary sewer or full sanitary sewer and then um, just that affects the the right-of-ways the the swales the sidewall all the issues start to pour into uh, the taking back or the utilization of uh, the town's right-of-way and what that'll uh, what impact that'll have on future land development uh, which I've heard clearly in every setting we want to restrict and limit um, to the scale and scope and aesthetic of Ocean Ridge, but that's an elusive description yes. of what that means at this point in the juncture. Yes. So Speaking of utilities, have we had any input or assessment from FPNL about um, this water rise issue? Does it impact them in? Or us are you, are you talking anything? specifically, uh, for example, in under undergrounding and things any like that? Any undergrounding or any surface um, transformers or anything that's uh, all their infrastructure that's within the, the limits of the town? Well, I can assure you that the, the power company loves having their wires up in the air, and I can assure you that um, that's easier to fix. And uh, as much as there's uh, undergrounding is in vogue in certain areas, it, it's not a panacea to, to fix sure. um, when especially in a, a coastal zone like this where we have real significant groundwater uh, ground water table issues but have they given us an assessment uh, no we haven't done that have uh, under any of this Florida code stuff the uh, city of Highland Beach I think uh, the attorney who does some work down there could attest to this they mm -hmm. they recently did a study uh, about doing all that kind of stuff and it was a sticker shock at very least um, and, and I'm not sure they want to go down the road that they've had studied, but uh, it's a very expensive proposition to underground power. Um, however, in the future, if you're looking at um, upgrading the, the potable water infrastructure, looking at sanitary sewer, everything, if we're going to be digging up the streets at some point in the future, um, those questions will be asked. No, I wasn't advocating out. underground. I was just the advocate wanting to know if there's been an assessment of what we have and what's impacted right. with the water going up. Totally different. We're in. Well, go ahead. Do you want to speak to it, Don? Yeah. Well, we're on. We're on a lot of um, uh, both local and regional groups that are looking at these issues, and uh, we've certainly been looking at it. I, I attend a number of meetings with the vice mayor and commissioner and stuff that uh, are looking at those the issues of sea level rise and some of those yeah. impacts, but uh, drainage infrastructure, and I didn't even mention in my list there, stormwater drainage infrastructure, that's a whole other utility that we really don't deal with or ignore that's a big ticket future decision-making item. Um, well, you know, they're all interrelated. And the tail, therefore, the tail that wags the dog, which is everything we've been talking about today, is really what's the future of our utility system from it's going to be a major player yeah i mean it's going to it's it, it impacts all of this stuff we and so therefore we need to analyze the future of this community in light of where we're going to end up with the utility system in 10 or 15 years or sooner 
The uh, feedback, sure. just briefly, if I may, Chair, the, the feedback we got from newly elected state officials is that because water issues were prevalent at every level of people running for office at every level of government, um, there is already drafting going on in Tallahassee for the upcoming legislative sessions and beyond uh, that will start to look at those issues in terms of you will and when versus um, if. Uh, uh, thank you. It's becoming a prevalent uh, discussion at higher levels. Good. Uh, yes, Don, please. Um, the sea level rise issue is one that's uh, creeping up on us much quicker than which was originally in, in anticipated. And so uh, I'm on a committee working with a number of uh, seven communities within uh, the Palm Beach County area. Now we're trying to do uh, an assessment of um, what actions need to be taken. And uh, Boynton has gotten a grant uh, that uh, we are uh, part of uh, as far as going out and looking to find a professional that can come in and do a vulnerability study which would be done and I think Rick you were talking about the last time we're moving that timetable up uh, but it looks like that we're headed towards uh, being able to do that uh, next year in 2020. Um, what I wanted to bring up was that you all in um, planning the zoning meeting on, on May 14th of last year, uh, you did a, a land development code review, and perhaps what you all would want to do is go back and go through that list because, I mean, you had general discussions, you had matrix discussions. Um, a lot of those things that you've done so far, uh, uh, like the bedrooms and the, and the yes. parkings and whatnot, those are all good things. And what you did with the 35% uh, the um, absorption on the lots will help us so much. Yes. Uh, I mean, they, those you guys are headed in the right direction. And I guess to Jamie's point, the other area that we really need to start looking at, and I don't want to get hit with any stones from the audience, but we need to start looking at uh, the sewerage systems uh, because that with sea level rise, right. Is, is going to be a problem. Absolutely. And the other thing you need to talk about is that the infrastructure, the water pipes, we own the water pipes, but we're held hostage to Boynton yeah. as far as getting them fixed and so on and so forth. So there are a lot of things going on that we need you all to start really thinking right. about and discuss. Uh, I mean, it's it's going to take some time. Sure. And we have a town, as a town, have been derelict in not looking at those future need items. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we need, to, we need to be looking down the road at, you know, five or More, ten years. Yeah, not just react to current problems. Yeah. Good. Okay. Uh, great meeting. And with that, uh, may I entertain a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. You did a phenomenal job. Thank you. Thank you.